Hey guys, Tom here from Next Level Audio, and today I'm going to uh, be teaching you how to make another sound. Um, in this tutorial, I am going to be showing you how to make kind of a, uh, well, how I made a like screeching bass. Um, it's kind of like a stabby bass. Um, you've probably heard similar sounds in um, a lot of modern electronic artists, um, especially recently. Um, Instead of like my last tutorial where I built the sound from scratch, um, because this sound is quite a complex sound, um, if I did it from scratch and messed up one parameter, it could change the whole sound. So instead, instead, um, I'll just take you through like every step of the synth of um, what I've actually done to make the sound and then you can literally copy it off the screen and um, if it seems like I'm going too fast in any bits then just feel free to just pause the video and um, copy what I've done um, no problem so we'll start off in the uh, master tab um, well let me show you the sound first anyway So as you can tell, it's kind of a like screeching, stabby bass sound uh, that was over like a Mimbaton, uh beat there, um, and it does actually work quite well. Um, at, like that was at a tempo of 115, um, which is pretty close to a Mimbaton beat, and that sound actually does work pretty well with that genre. But anyway, let's um, go through quickly what I did to make the sound. So as you can see, um, polyphony. It's set to 8 voices and mono is on. Uh, in the unison tab we've got um, detune just under half so at 38. Uh, pan is at 22. Voices altogether at 10 which gives it kind of a fuller sound um, and they are dynamic. Uh, we have portamento on so like when two notes are next to each other um, they slide into each other basically Well, when it's a changing note um, and that kind of helps give it the, the screech effect. Um, and that's set to what's well, on, and then 20 up as well. And also, um, no di digital in the sound quality, uh, but analog is at 52, which kind of makes the sound a bit more, uh, it gives it some random elements as well. So if we go into the expert tab, you'll see that this sound is quite complicated, but bear with me and just copy everything on the screen. So we'll start off with... Um, oscillator F and this is kind of the sub bass so if you don't want this as a bass sound and you just want it as something to layer on top of other bass sounds then um, I recommend just not using this oscillator but copying everything else or setting it to a higher ratio so this is just a sine wave so it makes the sub quite full um, the ratio is set to 0.5 so it's um, lower than the rest of the sound and this is the envelope for it. Some of these envelopes are quite complicated as well, but you just have to try and copy it. Um, so as you can see, this bit kind of uh, tails out a bit. And also, you'll notice a bit missing at the beginning. That's sometimes when you're making sounds, especially in FM8, because it's quite complicated. You'll hear like a clicking sound, um, and just like um, taking some off the start and smoothing it out like this at the end. Usually. Uh, kind of gets rid of that clicking sound, so that's why that there. That's there. Um, we'll go up to oscillator A now. This is a sawtooth wave set to a ratio of eight. Um, the envelope's quite complicated here. It kind of um, starts off, uh, goes down like so, and again, like the sub bass, it's smoothed out at the end. But you can just copy that anyway. Uh, I'll not go over the envelopes in detail. Just copy them basically. <laughs> Um, this is feeding back on itself um, by 11 and it's also got 50 to the output down here this is the audio output and also A is feeding into oscillator B it's modulating oscillator B sorry by uh, 34 so if we're going to oscillator uh, B this is a TX wave 3 ratio 0.5 the env envelopes there and this is feeding back on itself um, by 8 it's also modulating A by 7 and also being rooted into the filter Z uh, by 100. Um, you can just copy that. And 
that's it for oscillator B. If we're going to oscillator C, uh, it's a square wave, ratio 1, the envelope's there. It's modulating B by 29, and it's also modulating A by 16. And that's pretty much it for that section of the sound. If we go down to um, oscillator E here, um, it's a square wave, uh, it's at a ratio of 8. This is the envelope here, and it's also going to the audio output by 33, and also feeding into the filter uh, by 20. So, as you as you can see, uh, oscillator B os and oscillator E are going into this um, filter, and the filter has an envelope of its own, which you can see there. Also, you can copy these values up here. This is the cutoff at 25 resonance at 42, mode at 71 and you'll get this kind of um, shape here for the filter curve uh, and it's kind of like a almost a high pass filter well that's what it's acting as and then you can copy these uh, for the routine figures and the amplitude and that's pretty much it for the ops tab so if we're going to the modulation tab you can see that there is a slight LFO, so it, there's a sawtooth here and uh, at a rate of 33. And is this actually working at the minute? Actually, no, I think I took that off. I think the LFO is a bad idea. So just ignore the LFO. But anyway, um, what you notice is when I play the sound. What you should have noticed there is as I move this modulation wheel up, the sound kind of gets harsher. And so you can, I'll show you how, how I set that up. So basically, uh, over here, this um, on the mod tab, this is modulating oscillator A uh, by 85, modulating 65 by B. And this, and you can copy these figures there, 34 for C, 60 for D, and 89 for E. And this is... Um, basically modifying how much the parameters on those oscillators change as you move this mod wheel so what's really cool about that is with in whatever you're using like Ableton or FL Studio or Logic or anything you can actually automate this mod wheel so you can kind of add some like progressive elements and it's, it's really cool um, also something to bear in mind is the pitch tab so the way that this envelope is set up for the pitch here, um, when the sound is played, when you hold on to a key, what you'll notice at the start there is it goes up and then the pitch drops, and that gives it kind of this screeching effect as well. So, uh, portamento on, auto, time 20, we already saw that. That's also the same as what's in the master tab, so that's something to bear in mind. Um, analog is at 52 as well this is also something that we changed in the master tab a lot of people don't realize that a lot of the um, a lot of the things you can uh, change in different tabs are also available to change in the master tab um, and yeah you can just copy that envelope for the pitch there and I think that's um, about it. oh no effects sorry um, so effects uh, we've got overdrive shelving EQ, peak EQ and reverb and you can just copy these so we've got drive at 21 uh, tones at 100, bass 75, volume 40 and um, again with shelving EQ just like the envelopes you can just copy that sort of shape volume 41 peak EQ is on as well and you can see this kind of uh, dip at this frequency range which you can change in there excuse me so Q1 at 50, Q2 at 34, volume 56, uh, reverb is on with time of 70, brightness is set to 64, treble at 60, and dry wet at 2. So, hopefully, that just about covers it for this sound, and um, I apologise for going through the sound so quick, but it's such a complex sound, um, I would have probably had to create the same video about 20 times to create it from scratch um, so hopefully you end up with something similar if you end up with something totally different then um, comment below and I'll try and help you out a bit 
Um, but that pretty much covers it for this sound. Um, if you are a complete, I should have probably said this at the beginning of the video, but if you are a complete beginner at FM8, then um, I recommend checking out the course in the description. It's where I learned to use FM8. And there's also a lot of free videos on YouTube as well that you can go check out. Um, if this video has been uh, any help to you at all, then please subscribe. Um, it helps encourage me to keep making more videos like this. And uh, yeah, please subscribe and I will see you next time.